Hi everybody. Welcome to Ordinary Differential Equations, the mathematical framework and tools for understanding, modeling, and predicting anything that moves. Hi. Welcome back to the third lecture of Chapter 5. And in this lecture, I'm going to do my final example for this chapter. So we've seen the two examples already. They're linear, two-dimensional, autonomous ODEs. The first example was illustrated the notion of a source. The second one, a sink. This example will illustrate the notion of a saddle point. So this is the example, x dot equals ax. A is this matrix. So we have the same procedure. We're going to compute its eigenvalues. And then eigenvectors corresponding to the eigenvalues. So the usual way, and we find that the eigenvalues are plus or minus root 2. So they're real. We don't have this funny issue with the complex eigenvalues that we're going to come back to later. They're real and they're opposite sign. And that's the first time we've seen that. So we're going to compute the eigenvectors for each one, starting off with eigenvalue eigen of root 2. In the usual way, we get this eigenvector. And for minus root 2, and we're going to then form a transformation matrix, T, which will have columns corresponding to the eigenvectors corresponding to eigenvalue root 2 in the first column and minus root 2 in the second. Doesn't matter, just need to keep things straight. And then we need to compute the inverse. It's a bit more messy in this case, but it's 2 by 2, so there's a formula for it. You can look in the appendix. And now you want to check, step 4, that lambda t inverse a t should be diagonal with diagonal elements root 2 minus root 2, and it is. So in the transformed coordinates, the coordinates corresponding to the eigenvectors, this is the ODE. Now, in chapter 2 and 3, we've seen examples of this type of system. You can see that the u2 axis, if, that is, if you set u1 equal to 0, the u2 axis is invariant. If you start on it, you stay on it. And trajectories on that axis decay to 0 at an exponential rate, e to the minus root 2t. We refer to that axis as the stable subspace. That's terminology that's going to play a big role in the rest of the course. Similarly, if we set u2 equal to 0, u2 dot is 0, we stay on the u1 axis, which is u2 equals 0, and we see that on that axis, trajectories grow at an exponential rate, e to the root 2t. We refer to the u1 axis as the stable, sorry, the unstable subspace. And if we would draw the phase portrait in this case, this is what we get. We refer to this as a saddle point. The eigenvalues uh, have real part, non-zero, and equal and opposite in sign. Okay, but, and this is an important point that's coming up next, the, the original system was given to us in the x1, x2 coordinates. We solved it in these transformed coordinates. Now, if we want to know what the stable and unstable subspaces look like in the original coordinates, we need to use the matrix T, the transformation matrix, and map them back. And we can do that, and that's carried out in the steps below. I won't go through the algebra, but this is an important point. What does the system look like in the original coordinates? In the first two examples, it really didn't matter so much. Uh, it was a source and a sink, and uh, we, we, can, we essentially for two-dimensional systems, it wasn't going to change much when we transform back. But for the saddle point, the stable and the unstable subspaces will 
rotate. And so what was the U1 axis, the unstable subspace, now after the transformation looks like this. And the stable subspace we can map in exactly the same way. And it will look something like this. You can check these. So the saddle point in the original coordinates looks like a saddle point, but the uh, axes are not the stable and unstable subspaces. They're rotated around in this way. Okay, so that's the third example. In the final lecture, I want to collect together some general facts, and then we move on to what happens when we consider nonlinear terms near these types of equilibrium. So, bye for next time.